you know, because of this lag time, it always sounds like a third third grade play being done, and all of us trying to sing at the same time. So, uh, so roll call, Kathleen. Commissioner Blanco. Commissioner Blanco. Here. Commissioner Hernandez. Uh -oh. Who? Hernandez. Commissioner Hernandez. Commissioner. She was asking for you. Here. Commissioner Lopez. Here. Commissioner Seifert. Here. Chair Dickerson. Sure. <laughs> Kathleen, there's a real problem with your microphone. Something's wrong. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm trying to speak directly into it. I don't know what else to do. I'm, I'm sure that was a insightful explanation of that but <laughs> um let's go ahead and go to the uh, approval of the minutes of uh for uh, the planning commission of may 5th um has everyone had a chance to take a look at the um at the minutes and does anyone have any uh, uh anything they need to change okay, what's that Ms. kathleen i'm sorry i i was talking to the av yeah. guy trying to fix sound no that's good sounds good okay Sounds good. Uh, does anyone have any um, anything regarding the minutes? And if not, can we uh, can we get a uh, uh, commissioner to um, who ask for it? Here, sure. I, I will comment that. Uh, sorry, I, I was just going to comment. Um, I had a hard time actually getting into the minutes. Me um, too. Yeah, so I didn't have a chance to review them. I can't get into them. Yeah, same same problem. Can we can we go ahead and table the uh, the minutes approval to the next? Uh, uh, planning commission that um yeah the uh, commissioner lopez had the same problem as did i but evidently the fix was to look at the minutes via the agenda packet the, the link didn't work specifically to it but the agenda packet did so anyway so if we can go ahead and uh, table that to the next time does that sound fine dana yes yeah that sounds great okay we'll go ahead and I'll, we'll do that and then we'll move on to the uh, public comments period and uh, each member, oh, excuse me, um, after the roll call, uh, I just want to say that uh, announcements prior to moving forward with the agenda, please note the following. Uh, all written comments should have been submitted to the city planning staff by email by 3 p.m. this afternoon. If you wish to comment on an agenda item, please use the raised hand icon on Zoom platform. Once you are recognized, you will then be unmuted and allowed to comment on the business at hand. In the order received. Maximum comment time is three minutes or is otherwise directed by the chair. If you are calling in and wish to be acknowledged, please raise your hand by dialing star nine and identify yourself uh, uh, when unmuted. Um, moving on to the public comments period, each member of the audience may address the commission on any subject within the commission's business. Each member of the audience and each subject is limited to discussion of three minutes or is otherwise directed by the chair. Um, do any of the attendees wish to comment on items not already on the agenda? If so, then uh, raise your hand or star nine. Give the attendees a moment. Okay, seeing none, we will then move on to, uh, to the items. Uh, the following is the online procedure for the agenda. I will introduce the agenda item and turn it over to staff for a presentation. Once staff's presentation is completed, I will, I will open the agenda item to the commissioners to ask any questions of the staff. First, asking commissioners of any disclosures of communication between themselves and the applicants. After all the questions by the commissioners are answered, I will open the agenda item to the applicant who will be on as an attendee. Um, applicant, please raise your hand at that time and the host will unmute you to make any comments on your item. After the applicant, uh, applicant's presentation, I will then ask if any commissioners have any questions of the applicant. Once the commission has asked the questions of the applicant, I will then open the item to the public for general comments. Once again, for the public uh, in attendance, please wait to raise your hand until after I have called for public comment on the item and the host will unmute you in the order received. Please remember if you are dialing to use the star nine keys to raise your hand 
and uh, uh, raise your hand and you will have up to three minutes where it's otherwise corrected by the chair. After the public comment period, I will bring the item to the commissioners for any additional comments or questions uh, to the applicant or the staff. And with that being said, uh, the first agenda item is a is the consent calendar. Uh, the consent calendar is approved with one motion. These items are, are read only on request of the commissioner, the commission members. Should anyone, including members of the public, wish to discuss or disapprove any item, it must be dropped from the blanket motion and considered as a separate item. Uh, let's start off with it. Do, do any of the uh, commissioners uh, wish to recuse themselves from, from this agenda item? Yes, I would like to recuse myself from this agenda item because I own property within 300 feet. Okay, any others? Okay, seeing none, um, does anyone want to pull this item from the consent calendar or make comments on it? Okay, seeing none, then uh, if I could get a motion. Uh, I, uh, this is Tim Seifert, I would move that we, um, we approve tonight's consent calendar um, okay. Can I get a second? Mr. Chairman, I'll second that motion. Okay. Can, Kathleen, can I get a roll call? Commissioner Seifert. Aye. Commissioner Lopez. Aye. Commissioner Blanco. Aye. Chair Dickerson. Aye. Thank you very much. And we'll wait for Commissioner Hernandez to come back in. Maribel, you can come back in if you want. Oh, there you are. Okay, great. Okay, moving on to uh, the next agenda item, Russell Market Mixed Use at 501 South Russell Avenue. And can we hear from staff? Mr. Chairman, I have a real quick announcement. I, I did have ex parte communication with um, Gilbert, I'm sorry, um, Gil Palacios of uh, Palacios Architects on this, on this uh, project. Thank you very much. Has there been any other uh, communication the commissioners wish to present? No? Okay. Let's hear from staff. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. My name is Carol Zizanheny, and I will be presenting the project for the Russell Market Mixed Use Warehouse at 501 South Russell Avenue. This is a request to establish a mixed use warehouse and a neighborhood market in an existing by a half acre site, a conditional use permit is required when an existing developed site is converted to a mixed use project for the Santa Maria um, mixed use ordinance. The half acre site is one of two commercial manufacturing parcels that are um, surrounded by high density residential uses. Let me just highlight here. So the, this is the project site Below to the south is a high density residential um, apartment development across the street and to the north are uh, high density residential uses as well. Directly to the west is the Walmart shopping center in a planned development general commercial district. And this is one of two uh, commercial manufacturing um, lots as I had mentioned before. So uh, several of the objectives of the mixed use ordinance is for Santa Maria to be um, to improve the aesthetics of the built environment, promote a balance in a, and scale of commercial uses that meet the need of nearby residents and workers, reduce sprawl uh, and promote infill development. So this is an example of one of those infill development and mixed use projects. Uh, this building was formerly occupied by a wholesale baker. Um, looking directly at the, the main picture, there's a um, garage type door here that's proposed to be removed. Um, the, the front of the site is paved and there is no uh, current improvement uh, for a sidewalk or um, parkway. Uh, just working my way from number one to counterclockwise. The uh, project site is located to the north of the Adobes de Maria III um, apartment complex. 
to the uh, directly to the north of the building here is a loading dock and ramp. Um, this is proposed to be removed with this project. And then directly to the north is a produce wholesaler in a building, an existing building, which is proposed to remain. So this is a view of the existing project site. To the rear is an existing shipping container, trash enclosure, a cooler building, again, the loading ramp and dock, and existing paving. So the items to the rear and to the north are all proposed to be removed. Again, there was a, there is a garage door here that is also proposed to be removed. Um, so there is no activity proposed along the southern portion of the building, aside from just a driveway. This is a view of the site plan. The, um, as I had mentioned previously, this is a mixed use project. So the warehouse is the permitted use under the base commercial manufacturing zoning. The warehouse area is shown here in this kind of darker gray. It's approximately 35% of the overall building. And then the mix, the mixed use market component is um, the secondary use which is a kind of a, a convenience center use in, in the front, closer to the uh, Russell Avenue frontage. So the applicant proposes to construct a parking lot in the front and the rear, relocate that trash enclosure that I mentioned previously, it's proposed over here, and to expand the footprint of the building for a total floor area of just under 6,000 square feet. So the expansion would be just to the north right here. It meets required parking by providing 17 spaces and also provides 15% landscaping, which is required for commercial or industrial sites. Um, the engineering division has reviewed the parking lot and drive aisle design, including the turnaround for the Western um, parking area in the rear. Um, a comment was made at study session regarding turnaround and maneuvering space for vehicles in the rear. And so the applicant came back with a modified design to um, remove the the one excess um, parking spot and instead provide some turnaround for um, vehicles coming into a full parking lot with limited maneuverability. Um, so loading is proposed on the westerly side. Here is the, the opening to the proposed <coughs> warehouse connected here. Um, deliveries are scheduled for one day a week at 9 p.m with usually it's just a small box truck on the, um, again, in the rear. Performance standards for the mixed use development apply. For example, uh, there are limits to the commercial industrial activity um, between 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, so it's, it's limited to just daylight hours, no activities before 7 a.m. or after 11 p.m. And there are also conditions incorporated into the permit to prohibit truck idling um, as, as part of this commercial use. The project, the project proposes extensive site improvements, including 3,000 square feet of new landscaping, um, which is a 100% improvement. A new sidewalk here, a new parkway with, a, with five new trees, one new street tree, and, and four new on-site trees. Um, outside, there's also proposed um, shopping cart corrals, bike, bike parking right here and downward facing security lighting, which isn't shown here on this landscape plan, but it is um, throughout the site. Vines are also incorporated along these um, CMU masonry structures, the boundary walls up along the north and westerly portions of the site. Here's a general concept of the tree imagery. This is what could possibly be planted um, along the site. These are examples of large large street trees or if, if smaller street trees are proposed, these are the examples of those. Here's another image of um, proposed vines shown, some ornamental grasses, a low water usage, and some ground cover here. This is a a view of the street elevation. I'm, I'm only showing one side, but this generally shows the, the concept. The building is proposed to have a, a full facelift with adding um, 
some stucco um, to complement the housing to the to the south with natural kind of cream and, and taupe colors, which would complement the general vicinity um, housing to the south. I, I can go back to another slide real quick here and just show how um, the, that tower element and the, the cream colors would really blend nicely um, and really bring this this project and into the, the fabric of the uh, in the neighborhood. Um, lastly, this is a view of the floor plan here. And here's another view of the uh, storage rooms, produce box, proposed warehouse, meat cooler, freezer, and then in the front, this is a uh, full grocery with fresh foods, a meat and deli counter here, produce, storage room, reaching coolers, um, fresh fruit, fresh foods proposed. And one more um, shopping cart corral here. So there's three on site total. This is one of, um, it's going to be the fourth, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The applicant is, is on the line. They can correct me. But uh, this is one of three La Favorita markets in, in the city. This would be the fourth. And this warehouse would be supplying the La Favorita market closest to um, Main Street here. So that concludes staff's presentation. Um, staff recommends that the Planning Commission by motion approve conditional use permit U2020-0013. Again, the applicant is online, on the line to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Carol. Uh, before we go into it, uh, before I have uh, uh, open up for uh, questions for commissioners, I just want to ask if any of the commissioners have had any ex parte communication with the applicant. Okay, seeing none, do the commissioners have any questions of the uh, of, of staff at this time? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I have, a, I have a question. Certainly, Commissioner Lopez. Uh, thank you. Carol, uh, with respect to the mixed use ordinance, the original four square miles has a different um, criteria for base zone and uh, the mixed use zone, correct? That's correct, yes. So so there is no 51% to 49%. The, the base zoning doesn't have to be a majority of the zoning within the four, original four square miles. That is correct, yes. Is there a limit to what it can be? Could it be, could it be um, 80% of the proposed uh, use and 20% of the base zone? So that would be um, subject to the discretion of your commission. Um, staff recommended that there is at least a minimum of 30% um, of the, the, the underlying primary base zoning. And then um, the, the remainder would be, um, since this is such a small site, there, there's really, um, that was staff's recommendation. I, I can go back to that other slide, but okay. usually but staff would recommend the, the, the primary zoning to be the the, the larger share of um, the uses. Okay, and, and and typically when when you have a mixed zone, is it something outside of what's um, how can I put it? The, the the proposed warehouse seems like it's already part of the of the business, um, part of the, the 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 supermarket business. Uh, is is there something in our mixed use ordinance that says well? You know, it's already part of that. I mean, it's a storage room for the retail aspect of it. There's no, there's nothing in our mixed ordinance that says it has to be uh, delineated by a different tenant or a different business or, or something like that. Is there anything like that in our code? Not that I'm aware. It, okay. The, the project met all of the criteria um, according to the mixed use uh, ordinance. Okay. And then my last question, if you had a pet boys. Would a Pep Boys, for example, the one on South Broadway, half of it, or I'm going to say about uh, three quarters of it's retail, and then the automotive repair, would that kind of be a mixed use type scenario? Well, it depends. In, in, in a general commercial district, which is, I'm, um, for example, if, if we're talking about on South Broadway, um, general commercial would 
would allow a retail use, um, something like, um, so I'm thinking of like tires or uh, it depends on the use. Sometimes like, there could be a conditional use permit required um, and it's more of a discretionary item. Um, there, there is a, a matrix that can kind of, that goes through a little bit more um, detail about what uses may or may not be allowed. Usually um, a conditional use permit is required for um, certain mixed uses that aren't already allowed in a, in a general commercial district like the, the C2 district. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, no, it does. It does. Um, that was all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Carol. Commissioner Blanco, you had a question or questions? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, Carol, um, I believe at the study session, uh, it was discussed that uh, there would be no alcohol sales. Just confirming that that's still the case. I have not heard any changes since, since the study session, so my understanding is that there are no um, liquor licenses proposed. Okay, thank you. All right. Are there any further questions by uh, commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Seifert. It's not a question, Chair. I was just uh, very happy to see that the parking lot was changed up. I think that that uh, handicap spot in the back will will help for the uh, uh, the turnaround area. Um, that was really uh, not a good design at the beginning, having that extra space. So as long as we still have all the parking spaces, um, I think that was a very good improvement, and it does it does lend to the ADA uh, uh, availability there. Um, of course, they're going to have to have the, the blue striping and all that, and the accessibility. I'm sure that's uh, going to be on the on the final plan. Uh, the uh, and I'm I'm guessing that the waste management has looked at the uh, trash enclosure. That uh, that apron out in front of the trash enclosure doesn't seem to extend the the entire width of the driveway. Probably doesn't have to, but uh, obviously you want to make sure that you have enough room in there to get those trash cans out. The big roll-offs and into the truck and then back in with uh, with no difficulty. You, you certainly want to wouldn't want to be going from asphalt paving uh, to concrete. Um, other than that, I, I think they incorporated everything that we were looking at on the study session. Uh, it, it, it's it's certainly a uh, uh, going to uh, add to the uh, uh, to the area. It's 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 a, it's a nice looking project. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Seifer. Any other questions or comments at this time? Oh, uh, Commissioner Blanco. Oh, yeah, one more. Just and maybe this is, needs to be a clarification. Uh, Commissioner Seifert, I'm not sure. Maybe, Carol, can you confirm? Is that supposed to be a, a handicap stall in the back, or is that just, uh, is that just uh, crossed out, cross hatched, no parking? Well, I, I assumed. Yeah, it looks like one, I, but it's uh, it doesn't show the handicap symbol on the stalls. So I just. Confirming or just a question, I guess, is that really a handicap stall? Sorry, I lost my screen there. Um, so it, it was just proposed as a white striping. So typically um, one might see that um, in like a loading zone or something of that, of that nature. So it's not necessarily proposed as a handicap parking, um, although there there is a um, sidewalk that might lend it for ADA. Um, it's meant mostly meant to kind of reserve that area for no parking so a car can turn in and, and turn around. Yeah. And they may not need it just because they already have the one stall. That may be all that's required for the number of stalls they have. So, uh, thank, thank you, you, Commissioner Blanco. I, yeah, I assume that was a handicap from my screen. It, it looked like one. It really did. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, any further questions or comments at this time? Okay, seeing none. Um, Carol, do you want to? Do you want to? Is the applicant present? Would they like to make a make a comment or uh, say anything? I see a hand raised. I assume that's the applicant, um, Mr. Kasim, or, or um, um, members of the applicant team. Or yeah, so Mr. Mr. Kasim is on the application. I'm not sure if. Well, I'll go ahead and allow it to speak. Let's see. Uh, Ms. Carlona is also online. She's oh, okay. Starting. Great. Thank you, Carol. You should Hi. be able to speak. Hello. I can Hello. Uh, this is uh, uh, Jessica Carlone with RA and Associates. Um, I just wanted to comment. Um, Carol kind of answered the question on that striping in the back there. 
um, that it was intended uh, just kind of uh, no parking zone, um, just for if, if that back area got filled up with cars and someone drove back there, they'd be able to kind of pull in there and, and maneuver themselves um, out of the, out of there. So um, that was just uh, no parking zone. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Any questions of the applicant? Okay, seeing none, uh, let's go ahead and bring it back to uh, commissioners. Uh, any any last questions, and then we'll and then we'll open it up to um, um, to uh, attendees to see if there's any comments. Um, any further questions right at this time? No. Okay, then um, um, we can go ahead and open it up to the attendees. And once again, for the public in attendance, uh, uh, go ahead and raise your hand uh, using the Zoom platform. And please remember, if you're dialing in, to use the star nine key to raise your hand if you have any comments or questions at this time. And give you a moment to do so if you're going to. Okay, seeing none, I'll go ahead and uh, bring it back to uh, the commission at this time um, for any discussions or actions. Um, ultimately, we need a motion of some kind. So, um, do any of the commissioners wish to make any comments about the uh, about the project or ask any final questions? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yeah, uh, this is for maybe for Dana. D Dana, in the past, and in the past, I mean, in the last 10, 12 years, we've always kind of been trying to save our CM zoning. Uh, I know that also Area 9 was supposed to be the, the, the saving um, grace for our, for our, for our commuter, uh, commercial manufacturing zones. Uh, that way we kind of move out the more incompatible zones uh, within the city and we move them out to, to an area where it's more, more, more compatible. Is, is that still kind of the, the, the direction the city's heading in is uh, kind of getting the more intense CM zoned properties to a different area or is area nine still kind of being also phased out of CM? Well, I think that is definitely a question that we are looking at as part of our general plan update um, that we're doing. And, and actually we're going into the next phase, which is the alternatives phase where we're going to be looking at some land use scenarios. And um, I think it's always important to consider uses in proximity to residential uses and, um, there can be conflict, you know, land use conflicts when you have manufacturing next to housing and things like that. Um, so, you know, in looking at this site, um, a market is, I think, a good use here because there are, you know, a lot of high density residential apartments nearby that, you know, folks who live there can um, buy fresh food there and it's within walking distance. Um, so I think as far as whether we're considering, you know, locating or changing the location of CM zoning. I think that ideally it's just avoiding as much as we can land use conflicts between residential and industrial uses. And so, you know, our general plan updates really gonna focus on that as well. Thank you, that's all, Chair. Thank you, thank you, Dan. Thank you, thank you Commissioner Lopez. Any other comments or questions? I have a comment. Uh, yeah, Commissioner Lopez. I, I think this is this. I think this. Uh, I like the changes that they made to the project. I think they listened to the commission, and um, I think I'm ready to make a motion. Um, okay, uh, just before we make a motion, I would just like to make a comment myself, and that's uh, I really uh, like the improvements that are going to take place to this particular piece of property. Uh, the landscaping looks good, and. Uh, um, it's, it'll be nice to see the, this particular section uh, rehab. So um, anyway, that, that's my comment. Uh, go ahead, Commissioner. I move that we approve the conditional use permit U2020-0013 Russell Market Mixed Use at 501 South Russell Avenue. Do I hear a second? I second it. Okay, it's moved and seconded. Uh, do we have a roll call? Commissioner Hernandez. Kathleen. Commissioner Hernandez. Aye. Commissioner Seifert. Aye. Commissioner Lopez. Aye. 
Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Chair Dickerson? Aye. Thank you very much, and uh, I hope things work out well for your, uh, your new business. So thank you, or your extension of your business. So with that, we're going to move on to I, the item number four, Manrica's Commercial General Plan Amendment and Zone Change at 1429 South Glosser Road. Do we have anyone that needs to recuse themselves? Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Commissioner Lopez, yes, I, I need to recuse myself. Mr. Manriquez is a, a client. I'm currently working on a project uh, for him on the north end of town, so I'll be recusing myself. Okay. And, 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 and I'll see you guys at the study session tomorrow. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Commissioner Seifert? Mm -hmm. um, I have a I have an ex parte if you want to go through the uh, through what you're asking for first. Uh, yeah. It, we, we have no one else who is... Um, Oh, um, you remove themselves. I, I did meet with the applicant. Um, uh, he he is uh, he came to our office uh, and explained what he wanted to do with the property. I suggested hiring a private planner to help him with the approval process. Uh, despite this, I feel I can be fair, impartial. I'm ready to hear the information presented tonight, and I'm going to remain open-minded about what I hear. Thank you very much, Commissioner Seifert. Chair Dickerson, I have a yeah. conflict. Uh, because we provided legal services to Mr. Manrique's company. Okay, so you're... Within um, the last 12 months. Uh, so are you uh, recusing yourself or are you staying in? Yes, I, I spoke with um, Ms. Heather Whittem and she stated that um, one of us would have to. Heather? Actually, to clarify, thank you very much. This is Heather Whittem, Assistant City Attorney. When we spoke, uh, Commissioner Hernandez, you explained that you do have a financial conflict of interest. Yes. So under the Political Reform Act, as you've described, since um, the applicant is a source of income to um, you and or your law firm, that you will be required to recuse yourself from this. Uh, Commissioner Lopez has recused himself because he also has a Political Reform Act conflict of interest. Uh, but that leaves us three people, so I believe we can go ahead and proceed with the other three. Okay. All right, Commissioner Hernandez. Uh, thank. Oh, so Commissioner Hernandez will be um, exiting. Is that right, or not? That's correct. Oh, okay. There she is. She's oh. All right. Will we see you at the uh, study session tomorrow, Maribel? Um. Yes. Study session. I will be there. Okay. All thank right. You. Have a nice evening, then. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. With that, we'll go ahead and move forward and uh, hear from staff. Hey, thank you, Chair Dickerson. Uh, my name is Cody Graybell. I'm an associate planner with the city of Santa Maria. Tonight I'll be presenting the Manriquez Commercial General Plan Land Use Map Amendment and Zone Change. Oh, Cody, could you speak up just a little bit, please? Yeah, sorry. Uh, is that better? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, so yeah, I will be presenting the Manriquez Commercial General Plan Land Use Map Amendment and Zone Change. This is at the northwest corner of South Blosser Road and La Brea Avenue, and it will be changing the designations from industrial to commercial. So the project's generally in the southwest quadrant of the city. It's between West Stoll Road to the north and La Brea Avenue to the south, and it's between South Blossom Road to the east and A Street to the west. The area of the city has been built out with a mix of residential, industrial, and some commercial development. And the Area 5B component of the Blosser Southeast specific plan is just across South Blosser Road. The project site spans two parcels and is 6.74 acres in size. Most of the project site has been paved out and built with industrial uses, um, some outdoor storage to support those uses, and a commercial office building in the southwest corner of the project site. So this is just a perspective looking onto the project site from La Brea Avenue. There is a commercial office building that I just mentioned that's been built, as well as some sheds that are along the project frontage. This is a perspective from the corner of La Brea Avenue and South Blosser Road. Um, there's a pipe, oh, sorry about that. There's a pipe supply store and outdoor stores that supports that business along the frontage. 
Um, this is now looking southwest from South Wasser Road. If you're headed north towards um, the intersection at West Stoll, and this is just another vantage point of the um, pipe supply store. And then this is further down South Wasser if you're headed towards the intersection of West Stoll Road. Um, the train cars that we're viewing generally represent the northern property boundary for the project site. Um, generally, this project site spans about half of the block between La Brea Avenue and West Stoll Road along South Wasser. So the existing general plan land use map designation currently is general industrial and the proposal would change the designation to community commercial. This area of the city already has established some um, less dense or I guess less intense is probably a better word, um, commercial land use designations. So we have some neighborhood commercial land use designations which are immediately surrounded by residential to the east as well as to the south. And the zoning designations would change from general manufacturing or M2 to planned development, general commercial and staff supports this proposal for multiple reasons. Um, the first is it would provide a better buffer between the industrial uses on La Brea and the commercial zoning in um, the Area 5B component of the Blosser Southeast specific plan. It also would better align with the residential and commercial zoning designations that exist to the east and to the south of the project site. And unlike um, some of the neighborhood scale zoning to the east and the south that's immediately surrounded by residential, um, this project site is surrounded by industrial, which is a better fit for um, the C2 zoning because you know, generally the C2 zoning would be the most flexible in the city. Um, so we could see anything from, you know, a regional draw type use down to the neighborhood scale and having this um, industrial zoning neighboring the site is more appropriate. So a conceptual site plan was provided. Um, this was used to complete the initial study required by the California Environmental Quality Act. Um, and I just want to clarify that north here is actually to the left. So this is La Brea Avenue here, and then South Blosser Road is along here. Um, the applicant has stated that the owner intends to demo all of the buildings on site, except for the existing commercial office building that's in the southwest um, component of the project site, and then build out um, with a wide array of different uses. We would see um, general commercial retail office, potentially a gas station and a car wash at the corner and maybe a, a drive through coffee shop in the future here. And um, this is, you know, purely a concept. Um, if this project was approved, the commission would get to look at plan development permits in the future where we'd have much more detail. So there is one mitigation measure um, that would impact the future uses that could be established. I'd like to briefly discuss um, this was identified under the hazards and hazardous materials section of the initial study. And it um, was a result of some close work with the fire department. Early on, they exp expressed some concerns about the potential for any residential uses to be established that would be adjacent to um, industrial uses that utilize anhydrous ammonia. Um, so there's some uses immediately to the north of the project site that presented that concern. So uh, mitigation was created that would prohibit any residential development in the future, given that those uses which utilize anhydrous ammonia um, remain present. So this is important because it removes the possibility of an efficiency unit project or uh, mixed use with residential, um, all that potentially could have been on the table otherwise. So wrapping up, staff recommends that the Planning Commission, Planning Commission, excuse me, take the following actions. First, by resolution, recommend the city council adopt the mitigated negative declaration. And then second, by resolution, recommend the city council approve the Manriquez Commercial General Plan Land Use Map Amendment and Zone Change, GPZ 2020-0002. So this concludes my presentation. Um, staff will be available for questions and then the applicant also has a brief 
presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cody. Um, I think we've gone through all of the uh, ex parte communication uh, reveals. So I think we can go ahead and move forward to uh, any questions by uh, the remaining commissioners. Uh, we'll start with Commissioner Seifer. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Cody, um, I see that the office building is part of the project uh, and there's an entrance way off of La Brea, but I see a gate. So is that gate going to remain closed there? <clears throat> is, that, is, is this still considered an entrance to the property? Um, let's see, Commissioner Seifert. So, just so I can't understand, quite hear you. Are we, are we looking right here on, on yes. the, the site plan? Um, so, it's my understanding right now that there is no gate, and that I believe that the gate is located down here uh, by Building F. Does that remain? Let's see. I'm trying to just orient myself here. So, Building F. If you drive down this straight down, where's the little marker? Bring the marker up. Okay. Right here. there. Yep. Um, you know, that level of detail, I don't know we've necessarily analyzed. I believe it will remain. Um, but I could also refer to the, the applicant. Yeah. Commissioner Seifert, this is Dana. And um, I think that that's a good question for the applicant. Again, okay. as, as Cody mentioned, this is a very conceptual plan. It was really intended to just look at the through. types of land uses that they may want to do there in the future for the environmental review, but I think they can clarify that. Thank you. Um, also, um, a lot of the uh, the car washes and things they want to have like a some of them want like a, a manager on site or something. So that is not a possibility because of the uh, hazardous. There, there, nowhere on this site can be uh, even like a single apartment for a manager or uh, uh, someone to watch over the property. Uh, yes, that's correct. Thank you. Commissioner Blanco, do you have any uh, questions for um, staff this time? Uh, yeah, actually, thank you, Chair. Um, in terms of uh, looking at South Blosser, I know reading the, uh, the transportation section of the, uh, <clears throat> of the uh, MND, um, it looked like, you know, they were, the project would not be allowed to have lefts out on the South Blosser. And so just want to confirm that. And then if that's the case, would uh, how would we provide left turns in? Would we do something like we did on Enos West where we had kind of this, this worm configuration? I know it may be early to think about that, but I just wanted to get some preliminary thoughts maybe from staff about how they might address uh, this very busy road with, with three potential driveways uh, off of South Blosser. Yeah, those are all... Um very good points, Commissioner Blanco. So you are correct. One of the mitigation measures identified no left turns onto South Blosser um, from the project site. City staff really hasn't, um, you know, gotten to the level of detail um, yet about the site design. Um, there will be future plan development permits provided that are going to go into a lot more detail. Um, so the ins and outs and the driveways could be changing um, significantly based off of the future plans that come in. Um, but that is, you know, something that we'll be working closely with public works um, in the future on. Okay, great. Thank you. Any further uh, questions? No? All right, then um, why don't we go ahead and hear from the applicant then? And uh, once again, the applicant, uh, go ahead and uh, uh, raise your hand or star nine, and uh, you will be uh, allowed in. Okay. Good Step evening. Uh, uh, nine. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Chair, uh, Planning Commissioners. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Great. Great. Good evening. Um, we do have a brief PowerPoint presentation for you before... We begin. Uh, Julie Reynosa from Mr. Manriquez's office is here, um, as well as, I believe, Tom Martinez and Mike McGlinty from Tom Martinez uh, Architects, who did the site plan. And with that, I'll begin. So Cody did a good job, you know, covering the uh, the existing land uses, proposed uh, land uses and zoning in the surrounding area. Um, 
So we could probably just kind of skip through these slides. These first couple of slides are a little bit repetitive on some of the first ones he showed about the, uh, the land use and the zoning. This slide shows, <clears throat> thank you. This slide shows um, generally the, the Blosser planning area, which is from Stoll to Carmen and um, a, a Street to Depot Street. Over the years, there's been approximately 3,500 units that have been approved or built in the area. And this includes the Saramonte uh, townhouse project uh, to the south there, and then also Betteravia Plaza with almost 275 units. So there's a considerable amount of housing that has been approved here. And so um, that doesn't include the uh, housing to the north. And um, also taking into consideration the build out of area nine or the future build out of area nine and all those employees, the current employees, uh, you know, the employees that Winsett Farms has, Blosser is going to be the corridor that um, is closest certainly to Winsett and area nine. And uh, these services will, will provide, be provided for those employees and the residences. There's a bit of a scarcity of commercial services along Glosser and Skyway. If you think about the commercial services available, they really probably start down closer to Broadway and Skyway at the Lakeview Center. And then there's not much else before you get to uh, Betteravia and then up into this area. Um, even north as you go past Stoll Road, there's not a lot of... Um, not a lot of commercial services other than the Walmart center is really the, the biggest center there. Maybe now there'll be a La Favorita in that area. Um, but it, there's, there's a bit of a scarcity even up, up to main street. So I think this, this area will be able to provide quite a, um, a good infusion of, of neighborhood services and, um, and other, you know, services to this area, general West side of town. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the uh, an overview of the site, um, just kind of with some of the square footages and the the buildings, the and the uses there out there right now. the The buildings along Blosser, they're, they're older buildings. They were built in the '60s, um, and then some additional add-ons for office building in the '70s. Um, there's there's some C train storage uh, units there, storage sheds, um, carports. Uh, some of the site hasn't even been is is not really even well paved. So I think this project will it'll really clean up this site. Um, as Cody mentioned, the existing office building um, on the southwest corner to remain there is is a very nice building. Mr. Manriquez would like to model the future center off of that off of that building. And um, next slide, please. And have a variety of, of components there, different services, different different uses there. There would be uh, a, a good amount of office uh, opportunities, retail, commercial, um, as well as just other services, the gas, the market, potentially coffee or car wash there. Um, and it would be all one um, cohesive center. I, I, I'll comment real quickly on the, the gate. I think that's just an existing gate. But the intention is, is not to partition the site, but to have it serve as one cohesive center uh, and not have it, have it segmented. So I think that's, that was just to show an existing gate, Commissioner Seifert. Next slide, please. And again, this is carrying on with the, the existing office building to remain, uh, uh, you know, the idea right now is a Spanish Mediterranean style theme to the center carrying off of the, the building, um, the existing building now. Next slide, please. And these are just some examples of, of buildings that could maybe uh, give you an idea of the types of buildings that could be built there, including that Spanish theme with the, the red tile roofs and the, the smooth stucco and some of the Spanish, uh, 
style components to it. This would be more of a, a larger retail building. And then the next slide shows a little bit more of a mixed use um, potential building with maybe some smaller retail on the bottom, uh, offices on top. The C2 designation is, as Cody explained, it is a little bit more um, open, a little bit more flexible. Um, I could see a number of, uh, of different types of offices there, including potentially some medical offices that might be able to serve the neighborhood. Next slide. This uh, slide shows the site in uh, surrounded in yellow. Uh, we've embedded the uh, Westgate Market to the south, just to give some perspective of what that might look like, as well as you can see um, the Villa del Sol project there in brown. Uh, that's already built, as well as all of the heritage site um, homes there. There's about 300 homes there that are not that aren't shown, um, but are existing. And then the yellow, the green line is the existing multi-purpose trail and bike trail. And then this project would be responsible for adding to that for funding the, the cost of the frontage improvements there. And then ultimately the goal is the, the project, uh, the goal is to extend the bike trail all the way up to, to Stoll, interconnect all those intersections with, with crosswalks and you know, good pedestrian bicycle and, and uh, pedestrian uh, amenities. And that would be actually the same for the other side of the street. Once Area 5B um, builds out, then you'd have really good linkages throughout the, the Blosser planning area. Next slide, please. And this is just a, a view of the site. Um, looking north, you can see there's not a bike a bike lane looking north. There is the, the parkway and the sidewalk, but that'll be um, extended further into the site and accommodated with a larger sidewalk and the bike trail. And that would, um, that would be consistent and match what they're doing up with the other side of the street. Next slide, please. Um, there will be some additional employment opportunities with this site. They, uh, the applicant gave me the numbers on the left, only about nine current employees between the different uh, three different companies there. And then there's some um, potential employment opportunities between the different uses, the retail, the office, and, and some of the other ones. So it, it could have a, a nice little infusion of additional um, employment opportunities there too. Next slide. So in summary, this project meets the um, goals and objectives of, of the general plan, including providing you know, community-oriented or retail, reducing land use conflicts between industrial and residential. Obviously, you know, point, excuse me, Cody pointed out that there would not be residential allowed on the property and for the project and also uh, and just providing a general balanced land use mix within the area. The traffic study um, indicated that there would be no impacts to local intersections from from motorized vehicles, obviously, we'll, we'll take a look at that further at the PD stage. And your question, um, Commissioner Blanco, about, about the turning lanes, we will definitely look very closely at that. And I'm sure the city and the Public Works Department will look at that very closely, especially with the uses going in across the street to make sure that that circulation works well. Um, this project reduces VMT vehicle miles traveled. Um, and I, I think it's important to, to point out that even though it's reducing the VMT because it's an infill site, it's providing all the pedestrian and, and bicycle connections. It is putting in all of the, you know, meeting all the green code, putting in all the, um, the solar panels, charging stations, contributing to mass transit. Um, a whole host from A to Z of mitigation measures, this project still has the potential to have to pay into and buy greenhouse gas credits. And you know, we bring this up because this is a state requirement. There is no local uh, requirement for land use um, projects right now for GHG. Um, it's a, a little bit of a concern because after they do 
all of these mitigation measures, and you you could see them in in the MND. It really is a, a full list that they have to meet the um, California Building Code and or exceed it, and a whole host of air quality and GHG mitigation measures. There's still even a possibility that they have to purchase GHG credits, and I bring that up because it's. It seems like it's it's um, it's a a burden right now on the local businesses um, to have to to have to do that when it seems like these types of projects are trying to meet the goals of APCD by providing all these amenities, providing the infill, not doing sprawl, and yet they're still potentially getting penalized. So these you might be seeing these types of mitigation measures for a lot of projects down the road. Just thought I'd bring it up on this one. Um, other benefits, though, of this project, it's going to enhance uh, that corner along a, a busy city hot, city road of Glosser and just really tie in nicely to the surrounding residential commercial uses in the area. Um, and then it generates sales tax revenue, a little boost to the local employment. Um, that essentially concludes our presentation. We, uh, we think this will be a, a good land use change uh, and change to the zoning. Um, we hope you agree and that you would approve the project tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Brian. Uh, do we have any questions uh, of the applicant or for the applicant by commissioners at this time? Uh, Commissioner Seifert. Thank you, Chair. Um, um, so, Brian, um, just going back to that entrance on La Brea, you know, I'm, I'm just, uh, I just want to make sure that there's access off La Brea with the, with the, with the street light there. Uh, that, that's the only light that's available there. And for a guy that just, I just hate to turn left out of those, uh, those items. The glosser gets super busy. So I, I'd really like you to pay some attention to that and, and just make sure that we have adequate entrance off La Brea. Um, I, I think there's plenty of ways to do that, um, but from what I'm seeing, I, I just I'm not sure if that's if, if that's addressed correctly. Um, that Blosser Road is is a hard road to path to, to, to get a, across. It's it, the traffic goes very quickly there. Everybody's trying to get past Stoll, so I can see that as as, as kind of a kind of a dangerous area. Um, it, it would be nice if we could get something with that light. Uh, so that people could have an option to go down the Brea and turn uh, safely through a green light. Um, when, when you say that the bike trail, uh, uh, what, what does that mean? Does that mean a sidewalk, a large sidewalk? What, what are we talking about? Because I don't see a bike trail on Blosser Road. What, what are we saying? Mr. Seaford, it's both in a multi-purpose trail, which is the meandering sidewalk typically that you would see with the parkway and then a eight to 10 foot sidewalk. And then on the street is uh, a bike lane. And so that is typically about mm, five feet or so of bike lane on the street. So, so both are required up on both sides of, of Blosser. You can see it actually um, uh, in one of the, the slides, if you go back, Cody, yeah, I did see that, yeah, where, the, where the, it had like a really wide sidewalk going uh, south. Correct. So, so that's, that's for both people and bicycles. The multi-purpose trail um, is really designed for um, people that are walking and, and cyclists that are, not, um, that are not confident riding in the street. That would be me. The, the bicycle trail in the street is for cyclists that are confident riding you know they, they want to they use bicycle as a real means of transportation so they are more confident riders in the street the the people on the sidewalk are you know if you have smaller children i think or or people that don't do not want to be in the street you, you would use the meandering sidewalk it, it would be great if you guys could could put your brain power together and get away to 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 feasibly uh, separate bicycles from traffic I quit riding my bicycle on the street. I just wasn't confident enough. Um, and I understand it meets all the requirements. I'm just saying this in the future. If there's a way for you guys to plan on 
some sort of separation. Uh, I think I think everybody would be uh, everybody would be better off. The bicycle riders, even though they're confident, uh, we still have accidents. It, 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 and I know there there's got to be a, an answer to this. I know we haven't really come up with one yet. And I know we're meeting the requirements, so it's just it's it's not. Uh, I'm not you know I'm not saying yes or no, but I'm just saying that uh, it'd be nice if we could just figure out a way to get the bicycles with around bicycles and get them away from the cars. Um, and, and I guess the fire department is the one that's saying um, no one, no residences, because it, on a project like this, I think it would be nice to have at least one manager unit or a security type unit where someone could be there in the evening, uh, uh, you know, at the car wash, something. Uh, a lot of times they, they put a little apartment up there, but I guess that's, that's not going to happen. Um, and as far as the, uh, the state requirements for the uh, greenhouse gases, you know, I, I, I totally agree with you on this. Uh, it, seems, it seems just an, a real burden after people have done an infill project, they've made uh, allowances for multi-purpose trails for bicycle riders. I think there's even something in there for every 25 employees, you have to have a shower now because people are expected to walk and to ride their bikes and we're trying to get them out of their cars. So we're doing all these mitigations, but if I heard you correctly, is this a state requirement? So, I mean, what all we're doing is talking right now. We, we can't do anything about this. If, if that's what you're telling me, right? Yes, Commissioner Seifert. I, I think at this point, we're not asking to modify the mitigation measure. We're just bringing it to your attention. Um, but there, is there, there's no, I mean, if it's, if it's like an ADU ordinance, so there's really nothing that we can do about this other than I mean, it's, it's a state requirement, correct? It, it it's a state standard that they are um, that they are using because there is no local threshold, and so we talked with staff about this, and they said if we, this is essentially a as they they put it, this is a a relief valve. This is a way out. If for some reason you go through a GHG emissions analysis an inventory of the, the project once a PD permit is submitted, if it doesn't meet the, the state thresholds, this would be an option to be able to buy credits to meet that requirement. All right. And on the, I know it's conceptual. So you, you, if there, you said, you mentioned medical, obviously there's more parking uh, that's going to be uh, required with medical. You guys have that all figured out, no problem. Again, this is just a, a very, very okay. conceptual plan. Everything would be reviewed at the PD stage for all the specific uses, the parking, the landscaping, the amenities, the lighting, the access, everything. I think this is really just a high level look at what could be going there. Okay. Again, just uh, in the future, the La Brea, uh, the light, I really like to utilize that for as much traffic as possible. Uh, that ends my deal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Seifert. Commissioner Blanco, do you have any questions or comments for uh, the applicant at this time? Uh, no questions, but I, I just will reinforce the comment uh, that Commissioner Seifert made on the signal there. I think, you know, um, funneling traffic to there, the signal is a lot better than trying to turn left out of there on the Blosser. And with the Southeast uh, Blosser specific plan and the development there, that's gonna be, become a very busy intersection. And so, you know, making sure that we have capacity there for this development at that intersection, because La Brea is not as busy right now. It will be very busy in the future. Uh, looking at that intersection uh, carefully and making sure that we can accommodate traffic, I think is going to be very important. So, um, but, but no, no other questions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I'll, I'll chime in as well, just to make it a, um, abundantly clear. I, I agree about uh, the La Brea. Um, intersection as well. I think uh, uh, I travel fairly frequently, at least three or four times a week down right past that. And uh, it can be very, very hazardous and it can be very, very busy. Uh, a, a project like this is only going to increase the amount of uh, traffic. Uh, and so uh, we want to make sure that uh, we don't end up with an increase in, uh, in uh, accidents as well. Um, okay, with, with that, no more questions for the applicant. We'll go ahead and, uh, 
and ask for uh, any of the public that wishes to uh, comment. Um, once again, uh, I'll call for public comment on the item and, uh, I'll, and the host will unmute you in the order received. Please remember if you're dialing the uh, if you're dialing in to use the star nine key to raise your hand, and you'll have up to three minutes to talk. So do we? I see one hand up, and um, we can move forward from there. Oh, it looks like it's Tom Martinez. So I guess it's still the, the um, is uh, would this be officially applicant? More applicant uh, interjection. Yes, this is Tom okay. Martinez. I just wanted to add that Mr. Manriquez has a present, uh, presently has an office operation, administrative operation for his farm management business. So the gate currently that is shown, that actually separates his administrative operations from his uh, farming operation, which is a lot of his tractor equipment, et cetera. And the intent would be to leave that gate up until completion of the construction to minimize the impact on his operation. But once all of this is developed, then that gate would be coming out. Great. Thank you very much for the clarification, Tom. That was all I had. Okay. Um, ben, going back once again to the public, uh, does the... Uh, do any of the attendees wish to have any questions or comments at this time, or I guess um, comments? I'll uh, give you a moment to do so if that's what you care to. Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll go ahead and bring it back to the uh, commissioners for discussion and for any uh, um, motions on resolutions, that sort of thing. Do we, uh, does anybody wanna make any comments? or make resolution. Uh, Commissioner Seifert. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, overall, I think it's a, a really good addition to that uh, area. Uh, the buildings are very nicely designed and they have multiple uses, which is definitely gonna be needed. Uh, we have a lot going on across the street. Uh, so that, that whole area is going to change. Uh, I think it's, I think it's a, a great timing, a good opportunity to, to do that timing do that change and uh like i said i, I just uh, i do worry always worry about getting in and out of, a, of an, an, an area and i stated that stuff so uh other than that uh, i'm pleased to see it i think it's a, a a decent idea so thank you thank you very much commissioner blanco uh yeah i i also think it's actually uh a, a, a good change use for that uh those two uh, parcels it makes a lot more sense with the uh with the residential development coming into that area and just kind of the lack of general commercial uh property along blosser um i think it's it's going to be good uh, convenience and good services for that area so i i'm generally supportive of it i think uh just how busy that part of town can be in blosser i'm also a little concerned with uh the traffic and circulation. So I'm, I'm looking forward to a good plan uh, that addresses that. So, but otherwise I like the, I like the project. Right. Thank you very much. The, uh, the only comment I, I have is, uh, I, you know, it, as this has been alluded to by the other commissioners, there's the, uh, there's the residential that's going to be going in across the street. Um, I have a, a little bit of concern uh, um, as I'm sure public works will at some point that um, that you might have uh, some desire. If this is a becomes a center that has uh, things that are that are draws for for the residents there. That you might have pedestrian traffic wanting to uh, cross Blosser as well. Uh, that goes back to frankly the uh, uh, the the light there at uh, La Brea. So um, it's it's certainly something we want to consider. Is that uh, that that arterial um, path. That uh, uh, that is Blosser right there uh, may in the near future as the residential goes in as this thing goes in and, and the rest of the area starts getting developed a little bit more uh, may end up finding that it's uh, it gets slowed down um, substantially quite frankly by uh, uh, by either pedestrian traffic or uh, cross traffic so it's just something to think about but we also want to make sure that we have safety for bicyclists and pedestrians and. As, as well as people in cars as well. Um, so with that, 
That was my comments. And um, does anyone want to make a motion? I can make a motion, Chair. Yes, sir. I would recommend that the City Council adopt a resolution to adopt a mitigated negative declaration and a mitigated monitoring and reporting program for the post project. Do I hear a second? I second that motion. Okay, roll call. Commissioner Seifert? Aye. Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Chair Dickerson? Aye. I would also uh, recommend that the City Council approve the general plan land use map amendment and zone change GPZ 2020-0002 for the same project. Second. Go ahead. I'll, say, I'll second that. Okay. Commissioner Seifert? Aye. Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Chair Dickerson? Aye. Congratulations, folks. Excellent. Okay, let us move on to, I believe, the final the final uh, business for this evening, and that is oral reports from either the planning commission and or staff. Let's go ahead and start with staff. Great, thank you, Chair Dickerson and commissioners. Um, this is Dana Eady, and so tomorrow we have a study session, um, starts at uh, 1.30, and we're gonna be discussing the Donati Ranch specific plan amendment, plan development permit, and tract map. Um, that's the only item that we have on study session for tomorrow. And then um, the June 16th and June, June 16th hearing, we're going to cancel. We don't have any items scheduled for that day. And also the June 17th study session, we also don't have any items on that day either. So our next hearing we're looking at having is on July 7th. And uh, that is really the only update that I have for you. Um, well, I did want to mention one thing. You know, we're still having our meetings um, uh, through Zoom. We're still doing that at this point. We're right now still under the Cal OSHA um, require requirements and they remain in place. But um, we are monitoring the situation. And then, you know, at some point, we'll be looking at opportunities to be back in the chambers. So I just wanted to mention that that is uh, discussions that are happening and um, it'll definitely be good to get back to the chambers with everyone in the future. So thank, thank you. you. That's, the, that's the update that I have for today. Okay. Any, um, anything that the uh, commissioners wish to uh, expand or pontificate on? Uh, Chair, just that I, I've already recused myself from tomorrow's meeting. I will not be attending. All right. Thank you very much, Tim. I appreciate the advance. Okay, and with that, we'll call this meeting to order. All right, too. <laughs> That's it. It's, it's done. It's done. Do we have We don't have a gavel. <laughs> Thank you, Thank everyone. You, folks. Thank oh, you. Bye. Bye now. Thank you.